Hey everybody, Bill Yaley back in the lab down here in the basement. And I wanted to get back into working some of these electronic projects for musicians from the book written by Craig Anderson. Um, in particular, uh, I wanted to take a look at Project 6. Project 6, the Ultra Fuzz. And Project 7, the Bass Fuzz. So let's go over to the bench and take a look at the schematics and see what we can come up with for a combined project. Back over here on the bench, I'm taking a look at the schematic for Project 6, the Ultra Fuzz. And it's a dual op amp circuit where we have one amplifier driving a second and the fuzziness of the circuit comes from the fact that I'm adjusting this intensity or this bias point for the amplified signal so if I turn it up one way it's going to clip off the top of the of the wave and if I adjust it the other direction it's going to clip off the bottom of the wave so instead of having our typical square wave like we would for a fuzz this is going to wind up squaring off or clipping either the top or the bottom depending on how we have that set. Now over here for the bass fuzz we still have a dual op amp circuit. As a matter of fact this first amplification stage looks nearly identical to project 6 and the second amplifier stage looks nearly identical to project 1. And so that got me thinking well can I just put all of those projects together? You know, and yeah, there are some different capacitor and different resistor values and such, but could I put something together and maybe put some switches or maybe put a potentiometer or two to adjust and get the sound of project one, six, and seven or some combination thereof? All right, so how did I go about doing that? Well, first thing I did was I scanned these schematics and I printed them out all on one sheet, shrank them down so I could take a look at them all at once. So I've got project one here, which I've already taken some white out to and changed the circuit a little bit based on how I built it in the previous videos. And the bass fuzz here and the ultra fuzz here. And I started trying to see okay where where is this similar where where do things change around and I eventually drew that up as one schematic where you know the things that were the same like this uh, 0.22 microfarad uh, input capacitor and that 100k value in Project 6, uh, the amplification was handled by a 220K resistor. In Project 7, it was a MEG. So I thought, well, that could be kind of cool. I could set that and adjust it up to a MEG there. Project 6 had this 47 picofarad uh, capacitor there. There was a difference in the output capacitors in 6 and 7. One of them was a... 0.1 microfarad, the other one was 10 microfarad for the base frequencies to get through. All right, so then we had this sort of gain knob. Uh, then we have our second amplification stage. And what I've done here is I've combined things from project one and seven uh, with the different, the different loops, the different feedback loops that go through here. And of course, then the output. Now the tricky part was coming up with a way to adjust this bias point um, as in Project 6. And so I took a few creative liberties here. Um, this was actually hooked up to the negative input on Project 6. So uh, I had to somehow come up with a way to put it on the positive. But anyway, this should work. This is what I'm going to aim for. And if you guys want to pause the screen and jot that down, we'll go about building it. 
one thing I did want to show you guys before we continue on. Um, both of those projects and Project 1, so all three of those projects, um, basically you be using these LM358 dual op amps. Um, but I also have another schematic for a green ringer and a ring modulator. And the ring modulator in particular uses four different op amps instead of just two. So I came up with this circuit board idea of, well, you know, what if I had the, the power rail coming in here, if I had a bias point, and I could either use one or two dual op amps or just the single quad op amp, it would give me something to play around with. So I went to this site, easyeda.com. Now, they're not sponsoring any, anything. I've just found that these guys are really easy to work with. It's very affordable. You design everything on the computer, click make that, and you pay your 20 bucks, and lo and behold, you get your circuit cards. So, these came in the mail here recently. So, this is pretty much what what I drew out before, where I've got the positive and negative or ground uh, power rails there. I've got a bias point that's going to get set between those two resistors, and I guessed uh, 100K, but I've gone up as far as 250K before or down as low as 10K to set that bias point. Now, if, if I'm using the dual op amps, um, this guy will run these two, this one would run these two, or if I've got the quad, I can forego those guys, and I've got all four of them, and I pretty much just drew out, you know, hey, here's the op amp. So now the, um, the circuit board actually looks like the, the circuit, and I can, you know, kind of freeform and put all of the resistors and switches and whatnot and build up around this. So never done anything like this quite before, so this may not be a great idea. We'll find out, though.